morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. That's a sleepy good morning greeting. Are we still sleepy? It's Monday, July 22nd. The feast of Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene today. Okay. It's the feast of Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene is who is Mary Magdalene? Can we review? Who Mary Magdalene is? Can we do? Do we know who Mary Magdalene is? Yeah? Who can tell me who Mary Magdalene is? <coughs> What's that, Sophia? Sinner converted. Okay, she was a very bad sinner. She was a woman who is said to be a woman of ill repute. Okay, right? And uh, she was a very uh, bad, bad woman. In fact, she said to be so bad that she was almost stoned to death, <clears throat> right? And uh, and if you would recall that uh, very moving scene from that movie, uh, The Passion of the Christ, right? She was uh, almost stoned to death, and and our Lord intervened, and our Lord instead forgave her uh, from her many many sins. So, today is that feast, the feast of this saint, who became a saint. So, from, from a, being a very, very bad person, from being a very, very bad person, she turned out to be a saint. She converted, she <clears throat> did a complete turnaround and, and um, started living a very holy life, a life uh, of ministering to Jesus and the apostles during their time and um, today in today's gospel we are reminded of that scene of that story where Mary Magdalene went to the tomb after Christ's death right? she went to the tomb uh, in order to check on our Lord to maybe put more uh, more spices on uh, uh, to preserve his body from corruption but when she got there when she got there she found the tomb empty right? and when she and, uh, and and so she she wept out of uh, out of um, you know confusion and they didn't know and she was sad and didn't know what to do and didn't know where our lord was <clears throat> and then she found somebody there uh, who asked her no what you know what what was the question woman why are you weeping why are you weeping and mary did not recognize that it was jesus who was asking her that question maybe because she was wailing and she had full of tears in her eyes welling up and maybe she could not recognize or did not even bother to look who is this man asking me right and so she says well um uh, they have taken my lord they have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they laid him. Then when she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there. So it was apparently Jesus. And, and uh, as soon as she uh, saw Jesus, then, um, well, she thought it was a gardener at first, right? So she asked, okay, uh, where have you taken him? If you, if you took him away, then, then Jesus calls her by name and says, Mary and with that she recognized she realized it was Jesus who was calling her Jesus because Jesus uh, knows her intimately knows her by name okay and um, because he you know and, and, and uh, that that was what woke her up and said oh this is Jesus and then Jesus gave her the task of telling the other disciples okay go tell go tell uh, the rest uh, that I have resurrected and I'm going to see them soon. I'm going to see them soon. And so Mary goes off and tells the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And then reported what, what she told her, what, what he told her. Okay. So, what can we learn from the story of Mary Magdalene? Not only from this gospel story today but um, but the story of her conversion so Mary Magdalene was a woman of ill repute and Jesus forgave her for her many many sins 
What did it do to Mary Magdalene? What did it do to Mary Magdalene? It made Mary Magdalene very, very repentant. It made Mary Magdalene very, very grateful. Very grateful for the fact of having been forgiven. And as a consequence of her repentance and her gratitude, the normal outcome of that is to fall very deeply in love with God, very deeply in love with Jesus Christ. And that became the reputation of Mary Magdalene. From having the reputation of a woman of ill repute, she became the woman of great love. She became that woman who later on became known to be a big, big, um, um, the, the woman who had a very big love for God, very big love for Jesus, to the extent that she was willing to forego, um, you know, her own, her own um, uh, ways, her own, uh, what she got used to as uh, living a good life, a good life of, uh, you know, having everything that she wanted maybe. And she sacrificed all of that in order to serve Jesus and the apostles. Okay? She, she dedicated her life uh, to service, to serve the needs of Jesus, the apostles, and the rest of the ministry that they were doing. Okay? So that was Mary Magdalene. But what enabled her to turn around and instead of sin against God, she loved God. She converted and became, became uh, a saint. What enabled her to do that? Well, first, it was because of the love that Jesus showed her. The mercy that Jesus showed her. And mercy is an expression of love. If you love somebody, you will extend that mercy, that forgiveness. <clears throat> towards that person <clears throat> no matter how many <clears throat> excuse me no no matter how 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 many sins how many offenses that person has done to you so first mary was a recipient of the unbounded love of god of jesus okay? mary was a recipient of that and mary recognized that mary realized that that she was loved by God and because of that love she was forgiven that recognition was what drew her to God in return but all of that drawing back to God will not happen without one very important component and that is repentance sincere repentance from one's sins because we cannot benefit from the mercy of god and the love of god if in the first place we are not sorry for our sins if we are not sorry for our sins we cannot recognize the love of god no matter how much we, we, we are told that God loves us and that God is merciful and that God is going to forgive us our sins, we will not value it. We, we, we wouldn't know how to value it because we don't have that sincere repentance for our own sins. Okay? So for us, to, for us to really benefit from that forgiveness that God extends to us, <clears throat> the mercy that God extends to us, there has to be, first and foremost, a sincere desire on our part to really repent and be sorry for our offenses towards God. Otherwise, you know what? We're throwing away the mercy of God. We are devaluing how God loves us. We are not giving importance 
to the love of God for us and to the mercy He is extending to us. So we have to show God in return that we are actually repentant from our sins. Okay? Now we have an opportunity of doing that all the time. Where is that opportunity? When does that happen? Can somebody remind me? When can we show that repentance from our sins? In confession, Joe. Very good, right? In confession. And we who go to confession every week, we have a chance every week to really, 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 really show God the sincerity of our repentance. The sincerity that, that, that uh, we have of... Uh, turning away from sin and walking the path of sanctity. Okay? We have that chance every time we go to confession. In fact, we have that chance every day, not only on confession, not only the day we go to confession, but every day. See, before we end the day, we do the examination of conscience. How sincerely do we do that examination of conscience? How sincerely do we say the act of contrition at the end of that day, at the end of the day's examination of conscience? How sincere are we? Are we really, really sorry? In the first place, do we, do we really uh, put the sincere effort to really examine ourselves with the questions we ask during the examination of conscience? Do we really examine ourselves or do we ask one question and let the time pass before we ask the next question and we're distracted with thinking about uh, the next song in our head or or what we're going to do tomorrow or you know or are we really thinking of the day how did we love today how did we serve today how did i care today how did i excel today those are the questions we ask ourselves right and then, do we really make a resolution in that next question, the last question? What can I do better tomorrow? Do we make a resolution? After examining the questions we ask ourselves at the end of the day, tomorrow we're given another chance to show how sincere our repentance is from that day's mistakes. Tomorrow, we have another chance to do better. What resolutions do we make? What among all of those points we saw during that day are we going to improve on the following day? Are we going to try to be maybe more punctual because during that day we were not? Are we going to try to be more orderly because during that day we were messy? Are we going to try to do our chores better the following day because that day we didn't do our chores well? Are we going to try to be more obedient the following day because the pre that day we weren't? That day we were rebelling, we were kicking around, we were dragging our feet. Are we going to study better because that day we didn't? See, those are the resolutions. Like Mary Magdalene, when she... When she uh, was forgiven from her sins, she really resolved and told herself, enough with all my past. Enough. Tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow is going to be a new day for me. Tomorrow, I'm going to show how repentant I am from my sins and I'm going to do better. I'm going to try to do better. I'm going to try to really, really become a saint. And I'm really going to show by my effort I'm going to show how thankful, how grateful I am to be forgiven from my sins. Because the effort that you show in doing better, doing, doing better is a sign of gratitude. It's a sign of thanking God. It's a sign of recognizing the mercies of God and that you are thankful for the graces that God, uh, the mercies that God has given you. See? That is what that means. Otherwise, if you don't try to reform your lives, then you're an ingrate. You're not giving any, you're not showing gratitude to God for having extended love, compassion, and mercy towards you. See? The effort that you put in doing better is a sign of your gratitude. 
a sign of sincere repentance and sincere gratitude to God. So today, let's recall these things. Today is a very good day. You know, Mary Magdalene was a big sinner and converted to become a big saint in the church. So the church is now proposing her to us as a model of what mm -hmm. conversion can mean for each and every one of us. If we're only sincere with what we say we want, which is to be forgiven from our sins and to repent, if we are really, really sincere, we can be another Mary Magdalene. We can be like Mary Magdalene who converted and loved Jesus next to nothing and really converted her life. See? So today let us give thanks for this feast. Give thanks for St. Mary Magdalene and use her as an example. Use her life and her story as an example for us to emulate today. Okay? Okay, folks. That's it for us. Have a good day, everybody. Hope to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.